Hello beautiful ones, you're getting me in my husband's dressing gown, haven't washed my hair yet, but I'm super excited to show up for you um, to talk about a conversation that I hear a lot um, with women that come and book calls with us, even when women first come to Soul to Soul, there is this huge fear around being negative. It's like if I'm negative or if I share what my big fears are, that means that they're going to manifest. Okay, read my lips. That is BS with a capital B and a capital S. And not allowing yourself to be truthful and authentic and honest with yours truly, you, is pushing you further and further away from the life that you actually desire, that has a soulmate in it that has you spread your wings and live on purpose. You being scared to be negative is a massive roadblock that you keep putting in your way. Uh, when I read The Secret all those years ago when it first came out, that was my one big gripe with the book. I think it's a great book, but it was missing the elements, right? It was missing a very important message, which is you don't just go and be positive. I understand, yes, we're all energy, the law of attraction, quantum physics, I teach that. But if you're not creating an, a space for yourself and an outlet for yourself in order to actually really get honest with what is on your heart, what your fears are, what you're afraid of, what your limitations are, then you're just putting icing on a really shitty cake that's filled with rocks. So I want you to know that, you know, when people come and do soul to soul with me, this is not just a program teaching you how to be positive not at all. This is about literally going home on a journey back to your soul. And in order to get home to who you really are, you've got to look at all of the fucking landmines <laughs> over your life. And you've got to be willing to get up close and personal with them, to confront them, and then transmute them and dissolve them. Does that make sense? So it's a huge, big, fat myth that I'm gonna bust right now to say that you fearing your own fear and your own negativity by just wearing a spiritual junkie t-shirt and saying, oh, I'm just gonna keep on keeping on and I know it's gonna happen one day and um, the universe is gonna bring it to me and I'm just a really nice person. That is a huge fucking disservice. It's called being fake. It's called being inauthentic. It's called being full of shit. And it looks really, really crap on you. And guess who used to do a lot of that? Me. I had that in the bag. I was Miss Positive. I was Miss Chameleon, trying to please everyone else, trying to be liked. Um, and yes, I had a lot of friends back at that time in my life. But like, hello, were they really friends that I deeply valued and who deeply valued me? No, it was just me. I mean, yes, there were some good friends amongst that, but no, there was, there was me like, like not having a strong value on me and not knowing my hell's yes and my hell's no. And not me having reverence for my shadow self and for the parts of me that had the doubt, the fear, the not enoughness. I wasn't willing to look at that for one minute because that was off limits. That was like the backcountry at a ski resort that I wasn't gonna go near, I wasn't gonna touch. I wasn't gonna go beyond that fence because I was like, oh my God, I don't know what's back there. I mean, just say I start crying for a week. I mean, just say I'm not this positive person, then what? Then I would enter into a realm of realness and truth. And it isn't until you're willing to be with your truth and what's really on your heart that you can actually change your life. That's why there's no silver bullet to transformation. That's why when the women come to work with me, they're like, fuck, this is the real deal. This gets really, really real, Lucy. I've never been this real in my life. I thought I was being authentic before. They're like, holy shit. Now I can stand in my light. Now I can stand in my truth. Now I can be unapologetic. Now I can be that version of myself that does attract the good men. Because you're in alignment with everything that you are and everything that you're not, and you're not trying to pretend anything. Stop slapping an affirmation on top of the shit pile. Stop pretending that you're happy when you're fucking not. And admit to yourself, I am being run by anxiety. 
I am terrified to actually fall into a heap and be depressed again. And let that fear of going to depression be the fuel that has you take action to step up into your best self so you never have to be depressed again. But don't just keep eyeing off your depression and saying, oh my God, it's not going to come back. It's not going to come back and will it away from you. Because that is having you be a control freak. That is having you absolutely be rigid and fearful and be governed from a place of lack and fear. Instead of owning the fact that, oh my God, I will never go back to that place of depression because I'm going to do the deep work and heart soul work that has me thrive and blossom like the flower that I'm born to be. I'm not going to push or hold on rigidly to my life, fearing my depression. I'm going to do the work that has me expand so that I can fall more and more in love with myself and more and more in love with life and the unfolding where I'm willing to be in uncertain times with grace. And I know that when I step out of my comfort zone and into the unknown, that all of the miracles and possibilities show up within that container, within that space, within that reality. Because many of you that are holding on really tight, I'm really okay, I'm positive, I'm not going to go back to depression. You're not magnetic. You're repelling everything away from you, including the pay rise at work, including the new job opportunities. It's affecting your bank account. It's affecting your health. Your friends are noticing. If you've got kids, they're noticing. You're not doing anyone any favors by beating the drum of being positive. You're killing your own life force. Okay? So not enough people are talking about this. It's not a kumbaya, I am love and light that's going to have you actually change your life. That's going to keep you stuck and in a load of fucking illusion. The quickest way that I was able to change my own life was actually being willing to sit with all of my imperfections, <clears throat> all of my not enoughness, <clears throat> to see just how out of alignment I was, how self-expressed that I was, and how unheart-led I was, and to go, oh, whoa, wow. I was really living and leading with my masculine and my bravado and, and my independent nature instead of my feminine, abundance, my worthiness, my trust. I was massively over-trusting. I was over-trusting. I was inauthentic and I was doing the whole fake positivity thing. And I was so numb <clears throat> that I didn't actually know how numb I was because I kept busy all the time, didn't I? Busy deflecting, busy drinking with friends, busy just <clears throat> writing off men and relationships and talking myself out of it instead of actually committing to a process that was going to help me change my life so I could actually walk my talk and genuinely be positive because I genuinely felt good. And that is what is available to you when you're willing to step up and do whatever it takes. <coughs> Even talking about this conversation of being fake and fake positive and it, it's bringing up <coughs> so much even in my throat space, my heart, my throat chakra. And I know I'm feeling that on behalf of many of you in here <coughs> because I feel like I'm losing my voice just having this conversation. And I'm feeling really lit today and really expansive and really inspired. So I know it's not me. But when it is me, and I do have those days, I'm able to be with that. I'm able to sit with my shadow self. I'm, an, I'm, I'm able to go, I'm not feeling great today. I'm not feeling inspired today. I'm able to let that be until I can shift. Once I've realized what it is that's in my space that doesn't feel good, I'm able to be with that and then get back to my center. It's called contrast. You don't just want to be flatlining through life on this positive road where everything is just jazz hands and Oh yeah. No, it's not true. It's not sincere. No one feels like that. So why do you feel that you've got to do that? I'll tell you why. Because you're terrified of what might happen when you let go. When you let go of control. When you let go of the outcome. And also the journey of the, and the how. When you let go of all of that, what you're left with is the present moment and your presence. And it takes a lot of courage to let go. It takes a lot of courage to really be with yourself and to look at yourself and to dig and do that deep work. But by God, it's worth it.
because what you get is your life so that you can thrive and be excited, excited to wake up in the morning instead of fearing going to sleep because you're not where you want to be. Isn't that worth you taking a risk on? Isn't that worth you taking a leap of faith to say a hell's fucking yes to doing whatever it takes? Because I did and I changed my life and I'm helping women all around the world change their lives that are just like you, they're no different. What's different is, is they're not, it's a non-negotiable. They won't put anything in the way. Not excuses, not time, not resources, not money, nothing. Because they want their dream more than their fear and they want their authenticity more than their jazz hands and their pretending. Because having to pretend is taking all of your good energy and it's not getting you one step closer to what you really want. We're a few months off the end of 2020. Now is the time to grab your dream and your life with both hands. And I'm here for those of you that are ready to do whatever it takes and I can't wait to see you soar. So book a call with us. We've opened up a few spots this week. We cannot wait to chat with you to see if we're a fit. I'm feeling so much magic right now about wrapping up 2020 in the most profound, powerful way and not being a victim to all the fear energy that's out there not being a victim to who's getting into presidency or not, but really sitting in my story, in my lane, in my future, and what I'm out to create and what inspires me and staying in my lane so I can be the best fucking version of myself so that I can leave this planet in a better place. And I know that deep inside of you, you want to be deeply fulfilled by your life you don't want to be rocked around like a boat out in a thunderstorm, getting thrown off by what other people think or who's in president or what global warming's doing. Because that's a really tough way to live when we're at the helm of life all the time. This is about you creating a brand new rock solid foundation to live from that is grounded and embodied so that you can be with anything, especially yourself and your truth and your greatness. And ain't nobody can take that away from you when you've got that plugged in, tapped in, turned on. When you feel excited about the future and you feel fucking amazing being you, you're like, I'm so blessed to be me. That's how I feel. I'm so grateful to be me. I look in the mirror, even like with my greasy hair and my husband's dressing gown on, I'm like, hey, beautiful. <laughs> what magic are we going to create today? But... That wasn't always the case. There are many times where I would have avoided that mirror, just like you are right now. You don't speak to yourself lovingly. You don't believe you can have a soulmate relationship. You don't believe you can have life the way that you want it. And you just dig that, that hole deeper and deeper and deeper. And it's impacting your sleep. It's impacting your state. It's taking you out of your body. It's having you feel anxious, fearful, depressed. And it doesn't have to be that way. Because if I can change my life and the lives of hundreds and thousands of women, why can't I help you? But you've got to help you by first of all, getting out of your comfort zone and saying a big fat hell's yes to you. And when you do that, the universe will tilt on its axis. And that is the beginning of the rest of your life. Ah, and it makes me so giddy because I know what's on the other side of the big hell's yes. And it's everything. There are women right now, we just saw yesterday, celebrating that not long after Soul to Soul, with their soulmate. These are women that had never had success in a relationship at all, ever. And now they're just sitting there like, oh yeah, this is the new normal. This is just how it is for me. And I'm like, I can't even recognize the women that they were when they came in because they're just sitting in this relaxed, beautiful, abundant space. And I'm like, of course you've met the one. Have you seen your energy right now? You believe that you're worth it. Big, big love, beautiful ones. Mwah.